Now in this video we're going to take another look at the 7474 integrated circuit. This is its more intended use than what we looked at in the last video. So I'm using the 74HC74 for high speed CMOS right there. So in any case it's a dual, there's two circuits in there, they share the same power supply though. D type, so we got a data input right there, positive edge triggered, that's what the clock's waiting for, a high input and then there's flip-flops in there. We also have a clear pin and we have a preset pin. They are waiting for a low input. We're just going to tie them to the positive rail so they don't do anything in this video. They overpower what uh, the D pin and the clock pin are doing and uh, we're not going to focus that on this video. And then e they have uh, on each side here also two outputs. We got Q and uh, not Q right there. So not Q just has the opposite output of what Q does. If Q is high, not Q is low. If Q is low, then not Q is high. So here you can see better we have the integrated circuit powered, 14 to the positive supply, uh, pin 7 down there to the negative supply. Here are the inputs that we are not using. So we don't want to leave them floating. That's waiting for a low input. So that is the uh, uh, clear and so is the uh, reset right there. They're waiting for low, we put them to high so they don't do anything. The clock pin is waiting for a high input, we set it low. And uh, the data pin doesn't matter, it could be high or low. But in any case, that prevents the outputs from oscillating. We can keep them floating just fine. We are going to keep getting a high-low uh, input over there from the output of a 555 timer wired in a stable mode right here. So we got 10 kilo ohm resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor coming to the two capacitors there. The other side of the two capacitors, the negative side, to the negative rail right there. That's a 100 microfarad capacitor. That's a 100 microfarad capacitor. When you put them in uh, parallel, their capacitance simply adds up. So we have 200 microfarad right there. And then with all the LEDs, uh, one side the cathode is headed to ground. I have one kilo ohm resistors protecting all of them because this integrated circuit can only output about uh, four milliamps maximum. So one kilo ohm resistors, since we're using five volts, you should really use five volts with these integrated circuits. Uh, we'll keep the current down to about uh, two milliamps. So we could get a lot more out of the 555 timer, but just to keep it simple, I'm also using a 1 kilo ohm resistor for that one. So now let's get to what the circuit does. We have not Q down there, and then uh, right above it, third pin up, we have Q to that resistor. So right now Q is high, not Q is low, that makes sense because the data pin is high. So Q pin does what the data pin does. Now I can move this anytime before the LED turns from off to on right there. So we went from low to high. Right when we went low to high, that's when the outputs flipped. So we got the data pin low, Q is low, not Q is high. Pretty straightforward. So we can do that anytime after it turns on. We can move it. We can do it while it's still on, while it's off, doesn't matter. But uh, when it's off and goes right into on, it's going to flip into what uh, D is right there. So we timed it about that perfect right there to change it. So in any case, that's all that the uh, D-type flip-flop here does. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, that, donate, Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. But just watching uh, videos helps out a ton. I will see you in the next video.